the Zoom room opened. I'm getting this going with us. Okay, 9.30. Good morning, everyone. California Hunger Action Coalition members, advocates, providers, community members, all of you who registered for Hunger Action Week. My name is Eliana Binder. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the policy associate for Glide. Um, and I'm seeing the event with me this morning is Matthew Hurley, who is the Government Relations Hunger Policy Analyst with Community Action Partnership of Orange County. We have a full agenda this morning, um, but before we get into our program, we'd like to start by on, honoring the Indigenous land that we occupy here in San Francisco. And um, I know that we are coming from all over the state, so you can think about um, honoring the land that you're coming from as well. So for here in San Francisco, we acknowledge that we are on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramatush Ohlone, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. As the indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Ramatush Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place as well as for all peoples who reside in the traditional territory. As guests, we recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. We wish to pay our respects by acknowledging the ancestors, elders, and relatives of the Ramatusha community and by affirming their sovereign rights as First Peoples. Thank you. And as I said, feel free to think about this for your own community as well. So we introduced ourselves and I would just welcome everyone to put any questions or comments you have in the chat as we're going forward. Um, this isn't as much of an, an open uh, space, but we will have, and I'll, I'll bring this up later, we will have an event on Wednesday for everyone to share their experiences and thoughts of the week and their work. So we're really looking to hearing more voices um, at that event on Wednesday at noon. But for now, um, I can uh, go over our agenda. Um, and just to start off, I, I wanted to say that being the chair of Hunger Action Week here at, at Glide Center for Social Justice is a sincere privilege. And Glide is still relatively new to shock compared to some other longtime members. And I just want to say on behalf of Glide and our Center for Social Justice, it's been nothing short of a blessing to be able to engage with and learn from so many of you brilliant and gifted organizers. And this coalition has continued to adapt and grow and build power from afar despite the adverse circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic. That so many of you at this point, about 60 are here now and that over 140 people registered for this week is a testament to your dedication to each other, your communities and the people of California who all deserve access to adequate, nutritious and safe food. So this morning, we are going to be recognizing some of our champions in the Capitol and hunger fighters in our community who are true beacons and inspire us. Um, we're also going to be reviewing our legislative and budget priorities and going over some logistics for the week. But with that, I'm proud to introduce the co mc of our festivities, Matthew Hurley, who's going to share a bit more about the coalition before we get to our hunger fighters. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Elena, so much, and congratulations on your uh, being chair for this week as well. Uh, the California Hunger Action Coalition, affectionately, CHAC, or however you want to pronounce it, is a broad-based coalition united in our belief that access to adequate, nutritious, and safe food is a fundamental human right. Now, our coalition is made up of organizations from across the state, including food banks, advocacy organizations, and other social service providers. This is our 29th year as a coalition here in California. And with the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, food assistance, high employment, unemployment, and food inflation, we are facing record high hunger rates and sustained increases in demand at our various organizations. Jack is celebrating Hunger Action Week this week 
from May 15th to 19th, and we will be urging the governor and the legislature to support several complementary anti-hunger and anti-poverty priorities to address this growing need. So with that, as a bit of a preamble, uh, we can move right into our Hunger Fighter Awards. Now, these are meant to honor and celebrate the hard work of our dedicated hunger fighters in Sacramento and those making a difference and inspiring us in our communities. This year, we are honoring, honoring excuse me, Cassidy, Carmen Bates, and Jenny Burton with the Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano counties as our hunger fighting community advocates. And we are celebrating Senator Caroline Menjabar and Assembly Member Buffy Wicks as our hunger fighting legislators. So with that, I am delighted to introduce uh, Joel Showstrom, President and CEO of the Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano counties. Joel. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Joel Showstrom, President and CEO of the Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano, and it is my pleasure to introduce Cassidy Carmen Bates for her well-deserved recognition and receiving the California Hunger Fighter Award. Our food bank is incredibly blessed to have Cassidy as an active and passionate hunger fighter uh, here at our food bank and in our local community. This prestigious statewide award is especially appreciated in celebrating the impacts well beyond our local efforts at, but at, at both the state and national level as well. So Cassidy joined our food bank about four years ago as our policy and advocacy manager, leading our advocacy team and managing our policy partnerships. She's done an exceptional job leading two primary community-based advocacy programs, including our flagship speaker series, to ensure we recruit and train advocates who are reflective of the communities we serve. At least 90% of our speaker series graduates have advanced from the series to our second primary program, the Community Advocacy Partnership, or CAP. Our CAP group now includes 15 dedicated members who are passionate advocates, each representing a unique facet and demographic of food insecurity. Under Cassidy's leadership, our CAP advocates are included in essentially every phase of our policy process, and she aims to ensure their lived expertise and insights are in our annual legislative agenda. Our advocate voices are heard whenever possible, such as Kiva Dean attending President Biden's White House conference, advocates leading conference sessions like at Feeding America and California Association of Food Banks, and advocates join us in meetings with almost all of our elected officials. So our team has also been honored with the Advocacy Hall of Fame Award from Feeding America and Food, Bank's, uh, Food Bank News High Honor Roll for effective advocacy each year since 2019. Working alongside advocates to cultivate their hunger stories and incorporating that lived ex expertise into our public aid policy efforts is Cassidy's favorite part of her role, as she says, and has served our neighbors so well um, in, in, to our neighbors in need. So again, we are pleased and fortunate to have Cassidy leading our policy and advocacy at our food bank and so proud of her receiving this prestigious award. So congratulations, Cassidy. Thank you so much, Joel. I really appreciate that kind introduction. Um, good morning, CHOC members. I have a few things written down. I wanted to make sure I really took the time to recognize everyone who has been part of my time in this network. Um, so I'm so honored to be nominated and selected for Hunger Fighter Award this year. This award, I truly see it as a win for our whole team at the Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano, as everything that we achieve is in the fight to end hunger is truly a team effort. I'm so honored to be in this role with the Food Bank as our government and public affairs manager and to have the opportunity to grow our advocacy efforts at the Food Bank. I also want to recognize how many amazing hunger fighters throughout our state were nominated and selected this year for Hunger Fighter Awards. Each of you inspire me in this work and congratulations to all of you as well. I'd specifically like to thank our amazing advocates, as Joel mentioned, our CAP group at the Food Bank. These community members are so engaged and passionate and involved in every aspect of our policy process. Without our advocates, our advocacy team truly wouldn't be able to do as intentional and as client-centered work, which is what we strive to do throughout all of our policy engagement. Centering the voices of those impacted by the work, those who have experienced food insecurity, and elevating those insights for informed public policy how, is how we as an advocacy team truly see an effective path forward for systems change and for ending hunger here in California. 
Strengthening our social safety net is a goal that I believe all of us here as part of Chalk um, are united in. And I'm so glad that we can take this opportunity not only to celebrate the wins we've seen this year and in the recent years, but to also gear up for even more advocacy that's needed as we're in this ever evolving policy landscape. Finally, I'd like to thank everyone who's part of Chalk. This coalition is such an amazing and powerful network to be a part of. And we, I think, have a lot to be proud of, not only stateside, but here nationwide. Some of us were just in DC this last week and to hear how many states are looking to what California has done and are proud of the advancements we've made in the fight to end hunger is truly so inspiring. So I'm grateful to work alongside each of you. Our work is so powerful because of the collaboration and the collective impact that we all have. I'm proud to be a partner with everyone on this call. So again, thank you to everyone for your work in this space, from our advocates to food bankers to elected officials and everyone else who's involved. It really takes all of us to end hunger in California. And I'm just so honored to receive, I'll hold it up, I received it in the mail, the 2023 Hunger Fighter Award. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Cassidy, for everything that you do and all the amazing work that you're doing um, over there, not too far away from us here in San Francisco, um, in Contra Costa and Solano. Um, so I wanted to now pass it over to uh, Frank Tamborello fearless shock leader and director of Hunger Action LA to introduce our next awardee, our next Hunger Fighter awardee. Um, I'm so grateful for all the work that you do, Frank, and um, I'm honored to pass it over to you. So take it away. Uh, thank you so much, Eliana. Um, I know that the Senator is running a little bit late, um, I'm but I'm going to go ahead and Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed uh, with the introduction. So friends, there come occasions when something happens so stark and devastating that it calls for an immediate response of blunt force to prevent extensive damage. When the pandemic hit, our federal government responded by providing emergency allotments in the SNAP program nationwide, bringing relief from food insecurity to millions of people. But those allotments expired nearly two months ago, as most of you on this call know, and the monthly benefit levels have plummeted in CalFresh by an average of $82. Extreme drops occurred for many people in one and two person households, some losing over $200 monthly in benefits and being reduced to the federal minimum benefit, which is only $23 per month. And I don't have to tell you that even before the drastic food price inflation that, that's been occurring, $23 a month is hardly enough to get anything of substance. Not only that, but most of these participants are seniors and people with disabilities, people on fixed incomes, unlikely to be able to get decent paying jobs to move out of this frightening situation. So a dramatic response is called for, and we are blessed to have among our elected officials, someone who gets this problem and boldly took up the mantle to speak for those hundreds of thousands of Californians who've been plunged back into food insecurity. Senator Caroline Menjivar of the 20th Senate District in the San Fernando Valley is authoring SB 600 to add $27 per month from the state to bring the minimum, minimum benefit up to $50 a month. And she's even won bipartisan support, an astounding victory considering that at the national level, cuts in food benefits are even being proposed as a trade-off to raise the debt ceiling. Please welcome our hunger fighter of 2023 and a true champion for all of us, Senator Caroline Menjavar. Uh, thank you so much, Frank, for that kind introduction, Chog. It's such an honor to be with you all here today. Um, I'm really appreciative. I'm five months in, um, but even with five months in, these issues that I'm looking to combat, these issues that you are all have been on the front lines for, are issues that have been with us beyond the five months that I've been here. There are issues that in my district, the San Fernando Valley and the city of Irving are issues that are day in and day out, part of every person's lives here. And unfortunately it's gotten worse. And you heard Frank speak to why SB 600 is so important right now. And it was important even before the pandemic. We're just, you know, now seeing how dire the situation is. Um, and $23 a month, 
no one can survive off of that. And what I'm asking for, I also recognize that people will still be struggling to $50 a month to purchase food. It's still not enough. When you see um, states like New Jersey bring up bring up their minimum uh, benefits to $95 and their cost of living is nowhere near what Californians is, I question why we can't do more. But I'm mindful of the deficit. We saw on Friday, the governor announced that California is in a $35 billion deficit. So I wanna make sure that we are at least getting up to that $50. And I'm not new to the situation. It's just very personal to me. With my previous background in working at a food bank at MEND as a nonprofit um, director for their new programs, I saw how many people were coming in every single week, three times a week, every single time to get food because they couldn't make enough to purchase food. I saw parents, young parents come in and talk to us about the stories of, well, I have diapers to purchase. I have menstrual products to purchase. I have school uniforms I need to push purchase. My, grandpa my, my grandparents are living with us. It was a lot of barriers that were in, impeding them from getting food. Um, and those are the lived experiences I'm bringing up to here that I brought up here to California. The stories of the young college student who shared with me that uh, she now is struggling to purchase food and now is gonna have to go down a part-time, she thinks, um, to be able to work more hours to survive and go to school, which prolongs the amount of years that you're spending um, getting your degree. The stories of the elder population that are on a fixed income and are only getting $23 a month. And there's no other means of getting income for them. These are the stories I'm bringing up. And then they're just, they're, not just of my district, it's across California. I'm honored to see that the Senate, uh, the, Den the Senate Democrats feel the same way because they added it in their Senate budget plan to include $95 million ongoing annually to bring up the, uh, the minimum up to $50. It's a negotiation that we'll keep having with the assembly and the governor, but I am glad to have the support of my leadership um, to put this forward. And as chair of budget sub three on health and human services, I have a little uh, leg up, if you will, in these negotiations and conversation, and I'm blessed to be in that position. And I thank the PT for putting me in there. Um, I think it's so important to have people in these positions that bring in those same personal experiences um, who can speak to it directly. My mom is a CalFresh recipient, and we were just having this, this conversation yesterday for Mother's Day. I'm talking about the decrease that she had um, since April 1st. Um, and, you know, so these are the stories. It's not just um, an idea. It's something I see. It's something that impacts me directly and impacts my district and beyond. So I haven't gotten my uh, the award yet, but I saw a Cassidy show theirs and that looks amazing. Yes, because we are fighters, you know, gloves or no or, or not, you know, we'll continue to fight this battle to ensure people have uh, the ability to, the ability to eat at a bare minimum that's something that we should do no one should go hunger i'm excited to be part of his advocacy group um to get this going thank you for recognizing me it, it really truly is an honor and i wouldn't be able to do any of this work the sb 600 wouldn't have even been in the budget proposed a Senate plan if it weren't for advocacy groups like y'all that are calling my colleagues, that are organizing, that are reaching out to leadership, that are reaching out to the assembly, the governors, and saying that this is what is needed right now. So thank you for uplifting this, um, this bill, and I hope we can get this across the finish line. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Senator. That was inspiring um, and impactful. And we we really, uh, I'll second it again for all of us and you're seeing all the love you're getting in the chat. We really, really appreciate um, your leadership and your dedication and your passion for this issue. And we are all um, definitely supporting uh, SP 600 uh, here today in our meetings and on social media um, throughout the week and in the lead up to uh, Thursday. So. Very appreciative of you and all of your work. Um, and congratulations again for being honored by our coalition in, in, in recognition of all of your work. So in, in, in related to all the work we're discussing and, and the, the bills that 
the senator was highlighting, I want to pass it over and I'm happy to introduce two amazing leaders within the California Hunger Action Coalition to review the Shock 2023 policy agenda. So I want to welcome Jared Call, Senior Advocate with Nourish California, and Itzul Gutierrez, Senior Policy Advocate with California Association of Food Banks. And I'm just going to share screen again so that you all can see a visual representation of what they are going to be discussing. Take it away. All right. Thank you so much for that um, introduction, Ileana, and just want to say um, congratulations again to our hunger fighters. Um, we're so happy to be here with you all and just to, you know, be on this fight. Um, as you see, our policy agenda is geared all towards, you know, making sure that um, Californians have what they need on their, you know, basic needs and food met, um, as well as many other things. So I'm going to be co-presenting here with Jared, our policy agenda. And I think I first want to just quickly lay out, you know, as many of you know, we're in a very um, critical time right now with, um, as we're in a hunger cliff, California is in a hunger cliff um, with the end of, you know, the emergency allotments that were, uh, Senator was just speaking about, as well as, you know, temporary college student exemptions that are about to end here in, in a month in June, and then pandemic EBT ending um, uh, after summer 2023. So we're at a very critical time where all of these bills and budget priorities that we're fighting for are super important. So thank you to you all. Um, for, for doing this. And also just wanted to mention that we're going to quickly run through these. However, just know that you have all of the information available um, through our Chalk 2023 um, drive where you can access the talking points, um, our agenda, so you can get that deeper dive. And hopefully um, all of you are trying to training. And if not, that's available for you to, to view as well um, to get familiar with all of these. All right, so the first thing we're going to start off with is our, our budget priorities. We have bolstering the emergency food system. So we've got three asks here. Um, first is, you know, appropriating and setting $60 million as ongoing base annual for Cal food purchasing of California-grown foods. That's so food banks can have access to these um, essential um, California-grown food items to get out to our community. And then two is 180 million one-time food banking capacity and climate resilient asks. So food banks are prepared, able to be resilient, um, whether they need to um, expand capacity or install solar panels um, or get a backup generator. So they're ready for, you know, unfortunately here in California with all the disasters we have, are ready to able to respond and have the infrastructure they need. And three is permanently authorized the State Disaster Food Assistance Program, also known as SDFAP, um, to maximize our state's ability to respond in times of disaster. So making sure that food banks can be nimble and getting food out to the community when a disaster hits um, immediately. And I'm gonna pass it over to Jared to start us off with some of the bills. Sure, thanks, and so thanks everyone. And, and thanks, uh, especially our Hunger Fighter Award winners and Senator Medjavar for being our champion on such an important bill as SB 600. Um, we've talked a lot about the hunger cliff and the cut in CalFresh benefits um, and the severe and urgent nature of, of that crisis. Um, but I wanna draw people's attention in this second item um, to a group of people who won't see a cut and that's because they don't get anything. Um, and those are our immigrant friends and neighbors with low income that are ineligible for CalFresh just due to their immigration status. Um, so the Food for All campaign has been um, working um, for over three years. Um, it's led co-led by the California Immigrant Policy Center and us at Nourish California. I imagine there's a lot of overlap um, with this group in terms of the, the coalition membership. So I want to thank everybody here who's an active participant in the Food for All Coalition as well. Um, and yeah, the idea is very simple. Let's stop doing that. Let's stop discriminating against people um, based on their immigration status when it when it comes to something uh, as basic as as food and 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 healthcare. We've done the right thing on healthcare with health for all. It's time to do the same with nutrition. Um, so it's a pretty simple concept. Let's open up um, the state funded California Food Assistance Program to um, all immigrants um, who are ineligible right now. Um, so this is two different bills. Um, we're advancing two bills, on, one on the Senate side, led by Senator Hurtado, and one on the Assembly side, led by Assemblymember Santiago, and it, it, is, it is also a budget request. Um, so like everything on this list, this is a big week for this, this item. 
Um, so we hope you can speak to the importance of this. Um, it's a, a, a very bold and first in the nation proposal and something that we're very pleased that um, the Senate leadership has also gotten behind. Um, as Senator Menjivar uh, mentioned, uh, the Senate has really led uh, on, on these types of hunger and poverty issues and food for all is, is really no exception. They've been behind it from the beginning. So I wanna make sure we thank our Senate leadership in particular and let's get the administration on board. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there. And uh, with all of these, I'm happy to, and, to, and I'm sure it's is too, don't want to speak for you, but happy to take any questions offline if there if there are any. Um, so moving on to the, the next bill is AB 605. This is um, meant to help somewhat mitigate um, the harm of the hunger cliff by, by leveraging a pilot program that is getting extra CalFresh benefits to people right now where they shop um, and expanding that so that more CalFresh participants can shop at stores that are participating in what, what is called the CalFresh Fruit and Vegetable Supplemental Benefits Pilot. It's a very long uh, um, title for a, for a pilot program, but essentially uh, people can go to a participating store and they can get an extra $60 a month um, by buying fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, and that uh, extra benefit, supplemental benefit, is credited instantly back onto their card, basically like, like a rebate. So it meets people where they're at. It's operating now. Um, and it's something that could be scaled up with a minimum of administrative cost. About 95% of the funding that would be allocated for this expansion would be, would be actual benefits, would be food that people would, would have on their tables. Um, so we hope people can support that. That is up in appropriations um, as are, I think, most, if not all of these bills, uh, a couple of, of exceptions, maybe AB 712 is through already, um, but they'll be heard uh, on Thursday will be sort of decision day for a lot of these bills. So we hope we can um, make uh, key members, but but also the entire legislature aware of the importance of, of making sure these don't, uh, these important items don't, um, don't die at this point in the process. Um, I know we're pressed for time, so I'm going to stop there and turn it back to Itzel to cover um, a few more. Yeah, thank you, Jared. So continuing on, another bill that we have here is um, AB 870 um, by some member Arambula, and that's the Public Social Services for College Students. Um, this bill would continue California's leadership to improve access for college students by creating an ongoing work group with stakeholders to increase awareness of safety net programs. Um, so there was a previous bill and setting this up, but this would just really fortify and making this an ongoing work group and making sure that all the, you know, that the across the state, um, coal, you know, it would work in conjunction so that these um, ideas and um, ongoing work on, on um, for college students will really grow and, uh, you know, cross pollinate versus being siloed. And then the other one is AB 7112 or 7, 7, 712, um, that's by um, Carrillo, and that's the Hot and Prepared Meals for CalFresh recipients. So basically this allows CalFresh participants to purchase hot and prepared food with their EBT card. And one other thing to note about this is that at the federal level, we're also working on this. So it's kind of a companion in that sense um, to make sure that California is ready um, to implement this. And let's see, the other one, oh, did I, I might've skipped one, or no, I'm gonna turn it over to, or Jared, you already covered that, right? To SB 600. Yeah, I think the Senator covered that better than either of us could. So maybe we'll move along. I'll, I'll pass got it a bonus, to you. got a bonus yeah. presentation from a, a, an important Senator today. Perfect, I'll pass it on to you for the other two, I think that you're gonna cover, yeah. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll go down to um, AB, oh, the safe, the safe Drinking Water Pilot, number eight here. So this is also um, one of those pilot programs that um, the legislature and the administration had the foresight to fund some years ago, and now we're in a position to potentially leverage it. So this is something that's focused on people who are facing an additional challenge of not having safe drinking water at home. So they're having to dip in to their very limited CalFresh benefit amount uh, to purchase bottled water every month. Um, for themselves to cook with, for their kids to take to school, for their pets um, to mix with infant formula, all those things that uh, that so many of us take for granted because we have safe drinking water. And that's that's part of the assumption uh, with the CalFresh benefit formulas that you will have safe, um, relatively economical um, drinking water. So this pilot has uh, been providing an extra $50 a month to help defray that extra challenging cost that people are facing, particularly in the Central Valley. Low-income communities in the Central Valley are, are, are hardest hit with this issue. Um, so it's operating in Kern County right now, serving about 3,000 households. Uh, the idea here is, again, we don't, we don't need to um, 
set up any new systems or anything. We could just uh, expand this program with just additional funding. Uh, and again, 95% of those benefits go to people um, who are facing that that really stark inequity of not being able to, to turn on their tap water and, and use it to, to drink and cook. So we're really hoping we can um, expand that to, to more areas, starting with the Central Valley, which is um, the, the most impacted area. So that is just a budget request. So you don't see a number there. Um, but the budget process is, is certainly heated up right now um, following the release of the governor's May revise last Friday. Um, so we need to carry the message. This is something that wasn't in the governor's proposal. So we need to tell the legislature loud and clear. We need the, this, these kind of things in your package and we need you to see it through and um, make sure the, the governor and uh, leaders include it in the final package. Um, so I'll, should I just go on to food with care now, Itzel, and then turn it back to you for the remainder? Maybe that's easiest, less, less back and forth. Okay. So now moving on to um, item 11, that's AB 679, uh, uh, championed by Assembly Member Wicks. This is a child care nutrition issue. Um, it, it's actually not providing additional funding di directly um, to uh, children. It's providing additional state reimbursement to low-income providers who operate out of their own homes versus schools or centers. The policy is right now that the state does provide a small uh, state meal reimbursement for meals served in, in um, child care or preschool. But if, uh, if the provider is center-based or school-based, um, they get that reimbursement for 100% of the meals. But if they work out of their own home, they only get reimbursed for 75% of the meals. And that's just a bad legacy policy that's really rooted in discrimination and, and racism against um, people who uh, provide that service, who are largely low-wage women of color and have historically been undervalued by our state and our state's child care system. So this is a fix that we've been working on for over a decade, and we're really hopeful we can get it done this year. It's a modest uh, but very impactful investment in, in equity in our child care system. We recognize there are a lot of needs in the child care system, but this is a small, again, modest uh, investment in, in equity that we hope we can make this year. Um, and that as well in terms of processes up in appropriations this Thursday and is also a, a corresponding budget request. So we hope we can um, carry that message to the legislature to make sure they include it in their package um, for final negotiation with the governor. So with that, I'll stop and turn it back to, to Itzel to take us home. All right. Thanks, Jared. Okay, so the next section we have here um, is, I'll start us off with, is um, you know, preventing poverty and hunger for SSI recipients. Um, so, you know, we have about 1.2 million Californians that are in SSI SSP. So it's crucial um, that this program comes up um, and meets the needs for folks who rely on this vital program. So we have three requests for this. Um, one is to appropriate a three-step increase in bringing the SSI SSP grants to 100% of the federal poverty level over three years, uh, which would require um, 209 million over the next three years and 418 million ongoing. And um, to ensure, basically the big point here is to ensure that the state um, cost of living increase are providing going forward. And request number two is, you know, making sure that they revive and refund the special circumstances program, which previously provided SSI recipients with a lump sum to assist them when a special circumstance arose, like repairing or replacing uh, uh, appliances or like a roof. And right now thinking about in times of disaster, um, things like that, um, and certain moving costs. And request number three um, is, you know, to um, update and the supplemental and transitional nutrition benefit allotments, also known as SNB, TNB, um, to ensure parity with the increased benefits of CalFresh recipients. So we want to make sure that they're getting um, the same amount as CalFresh recipients. So that's the three requests for um, the SSI. And then we have, moving on back to some bill uh, uh, bills, is the SB 348 by Senator Skinner, uh, Pupil Meals. Basically, this is a great bill that just has many different great things that would do to strengthen um, California's first in the nation school meals for all fight, you know, from, you know, making sure students have adequate time to eat, that the food is, um, uh, you know, nutritious and making sure that it's, um, you know, meeting the standards for uh, sugar and sodium. Um, but most importantly, too, it also fights hunger over the summer by making sure that our state maximizes the summer federal summer EBT program um, and boosting those benefits so that families over the summer are able to supplement with an EBT card to get groceries for those missed meals while school's out. 
So that's SB 348. Um, and then we have um, AB 1178, that's by some member Luz Rivas, the summer caregiver meals. So here we continue on with the summer theme, you know, since it is, since it is the most hungriest time of the year. Um, basically, this would allow summer meal sites where, you know, children come to get a meal over the summer while school's out, uh, making sure that their parents and caregivers can also sit down and share a meal. Um, so that's what this bill would do. And then we have AB 310 by Senator Marambula. It's the Reimagine CalWorks. Um, so there is a need to reimagine the program so that families are put first and undo the harm from racist and sexist federal and state law. So basically, this bill would, um, you know, would by would work reimagine the CalWorks program by providing all parents with the critical support they need to ensure economic security for the children and themselves and moving away from the punitive compliance approach to process that respects and meets the family's need. Um, so removing those barriers um, and you know, making sure this program meets the needs of families who are on CalWORKs. And then we're getting here close to the end. Um, we also have, a, this, is a, um, this is a budget ask um, and we have for sustaining and expanding access to diapers and menstrual products. So basically, it would support the basic needs of families and people who menstruate, um, you know, making sure that there's funds to sustain and expand the diaper program, as well as the menstrual products pilot. Um, as we know, as we heard earlier, um, families, you know, it's not just food. There's also basic needs, necessities like diapers and making sure that families have those diapers for their children. And as, also as well as, you know, the basic needs met for people who menstruate. Um, so currently there are state funded diaper banks, um, but we need um, more funding for that and making sure that we can expand as well this program. And then almost wrapping up here, we have SB 59 by Senator Skinner. That's the Menstrual Product Accessibility Act. And it would ensure that all state owned buildings and those administering state services provide free menstrual products in restrooms. So basically ensuring that all of those state owned buildings and those administering state services would provide these products in restrooms. Um, you know, they are public spaces and they um, we want to make sure that it provides the basic essentials for health and sanitation. Um, and half of our state's population needs more than just, um, you know, these these items. So but this is this is definitely a start. We want to make sure that this is available for folks as well, too. So I think that wraps up our agenda. I hope we went over a couple minutes, but thank you, everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You know who to contact, um, but your team leaders will also be there to support you. So I'll hand it back to Eliana. Thank you so much for that quick rundown. And hopefully all of you uh, learned about those items in more depth in the legislative uh, trainings last week. Or if you did not, uh, or even if you did, feel free to check out the written materials um, that I dropped in the chat uh, moments ago, uh, the policy agenda and written form, the participant folder, which has all the materials you'd need, including training slides and the talking points. So hopefully not too overwhelming and your team leader will be guiding you through which items to focus on. So now I will pass it back over to Matt. And it's my pleasure to invite a dedicated uh, CHAC member to introduce the next Hunger Fighter awardee, uh, Izzer, policy advocate for Alameda County Community Food Bank. Would you please take it away? Thanks, Matt. It's my honor to introduce our third recipient of the Hunger Fighter Award, Assembly Member Buffy Wicks, representing the 14th Assembly District. Assembly Member Wicks is the author of AB 679, Food with Care, a CHOP priority bill, which will end the unfair reimbursement rate for family child care providers serving meals. She is a longtime champion of California's food banks and a stalwart supporter of Californians experiencing food insecurity, especially populations who are often left behind, including so-called able-bodied adults without dependents. She is continuing to fight to protect unemployed Californians from the unjust federal work for food time limit for CalFresh. Finally, along with Senator Laird, she is championing a $60 million ongoing investment in the CalFood program to purchase California grown foods. Please join me in welcoming Assembly Member Buffy Wicks. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and thank every single one of you for all the work that you do every day. Um, 
we're in like kind of crazy times right now. And I'm sure you are all are feeling that. And I don't know that any of us kind of anticipated what the sort of coming out of lockdown and all of that would look like. Um, but it's a weird time. I don't know how else to describe it. And um, we have communities in very serious need and more than I think we thought we would. Um, and I always view food as access to food and food security is like one of the most fundamental basic human rights that we have. And if we can't get people good, nutritious food, then what are we doing? I mean, that is like such a cornerstone of society, right? We have to be able to provide that. Um, that, if nothing else, it's so critical. And so the work that you do every day is so important. You know, and I, since I got elected in 2018, I do food work every year. Um, I carry um, often a lot of the bigger budget asks, trying to fight to make sure that we have more resources, um, as well as different policy vehicles um, to try to really bring about equity in the food space. Um, I've been on tours, obviously, in, in my own district um, with our food banks to see the amazing operation um, uh, that I know you all participate in your local communities as well. Um, and to me, it's just, it's, it's absolutely critical. Um, I'm also this next year, I'm very interested in diving into more school nutrition. Um, cause I know schools is, is particularly in, you know, Oakland Unified School District, which is where my daughter goes to school. Um, our schools provide a lot of, a lot of food for a lot of the kids that come to school. That's where they get a lot of their meals. Um, you know, and when, when COVID first hit, I mean, I was on the phone with my food banks right away, literally that weekend, um, and talking to Andrew and others around what can we do now? This is going to be such an important thing. And we could just see that coming. Like, we know this is where families get food. How are we going to get them the food? What are we going to do? What do we need to do um, to make sure that that we get food for folks? So I don't have to tell you all um, the reasons why we need to do it, but I just want you to know that you can always, always count on me to champion anything that you need in this space. Um, I will always be there for you. I will always work in this space um, uh, until they kick me out of office. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, we've got some really good champions in the legislature. I've got some great colleagues. I've got, as I mentioned, a bill this year um, looking at, at our, our child care facilities. Um, but anything that I can do to be of assistance to you, because I will tell you, you all are the true heroes. I'm just like the dumb politician. You guys are the heroes every day that are out there doing the really important work. Um, uh, and so I just, I'm so appreciative of everything that you do. So honored always to be in a space with you. Um, I know this is an equity issue. I know there's so much connected to this issue and that's why I view that it is, is so important. So, um, just wanted to do actually a big thank you, um, for you all. And, uh, again, let me know how I can help. Uh, I will always be here with you, for you, alongside you, championing your issues, um, for as long as I live. So count me in as a, a lifelong partner. Um, on anything that I can do here with you. So thank you very, very much for what you all do. I love the silent claps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you're getting lots of love in the chat. So feel free to check that out. People in California and in, in your district are extremely appreciative of the work that you have been doing and are doing again this year. Can, actually, can I make one more note on that? I will tell you one of the things that actually um, impacted my desire to, to do policy work in this space. Um, one, I grew up in a very working class community and, you know, had access because of social safety nets to quality food as did many people in my, my community. So that was a, a really important personal thing for me. But there was a forum on food um, when I ran for office. Um, and it was very informative to me as from a policy perspective, and it brought together a lot of different people who work in the food space, um, and really got me on the record talking about this and got me focused as someone who was running for office on what I could do in this space. And so that was incredibly powerful. I know some of you worked on that, um, but that's a really important tool. So I just, that, that was an early investment from many folks in the food space to people like me, which I want to pay that back, um, you know, and in dividends uh, until uh, for as long as I can. So thank you for those of you that organized that space back in 2018 for us to have those conversations. Um, I just unmuted myself. <laughs> Audible clapping. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we're we're appreciative to hear that these uh, these efforts on our part are effective at uh, getting buy-in from politicians like yourself, Ms. Wicks. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like now. to, uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, my pleasure to welcome back uh, Joel Showstrom, President and CEO of the Food Bank of Contra Costa and Salado Counties for our next Hunger Fighter awardee. Uh, well, thank you, Matt. And I'm just so honored to get to provide introductions twice today. Um, so now I have the honor to introduce Jenny Burton, who is so actively engaged as a hunger fighter, serving our food bank, our community, but also bringing her voice to the state and national level. Uh, Jenny is a college uh, health nurse at St. Mary's College of California, and she previously worked at Stanford's Children's Hospital as a pediatric nurse. Jenny's hunger fighting journey began with the Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano Speaker Series Advocacy Program in 2021. Jenny currently serves as a Speaker Series mentor to new advocates and believes that a hunger fighter's personal hunger story is the powerful tool that connects them to their community and to elected officials to inspire anti-hunger policy change. As a food bank community advocacy partner, Jenny initiated food insecurity screening in the wellness division at St. Mary's College. She raises awareness and reduces stigma around college student food insecurity and CalFresh through her clinic conversations with her patients. She links food insecurity college students to CalFresh with the support of our food bank's CalFresh team. And Jenny believes in food as medicine and that college students can achieve their academic potential if they have access to nutritious food. As a CAP member, Jenny has had the opportunity to serve as a panelist at CFB's Food Access Conference, at Feeding America's National Anti-Hunger Policy Conference, and at our Food Bank's Legislative Lunch, where she shared how our Food Bank Speaker Series Advocacy Program empowers hunger fighters with lived experience to enact change. Just last week, Jenny attended the 2023 Feeding America Conference, um, where she had the opportunity to advocate on, on Capitol Hill for 2023 um, farm bill priorities uh, and college hunger. And uh, she said this was a thrilling first for her. So we are very fortunate to have Jenny as an active member of our food bank board. Uh, she is on the food bank advocacy committee and the executive committee, and she chairs our programs committee. So thank you, Jenny, for your passion, your energy, and your efforts in support of our board, our community, as well as using your voice to impact at the state and even national levels. So congratulations, Jenny. Thank you so much, Joel. I am so grateful to the Food Bank of Contra Costa and Solano for supporting my trip as a CAP member to the Feeding America Anti-Hunger Conference in Washington, DC. It was a big trip for a nurse who works in Moraga, California. I met hunger champion representative McGovern and we spoke with him on his office patio overlooking the Capitol building. At the rotunda, we encountered Feeding America's Claire Babano Vontano, which really made my day. And in Washington, I learned that the national anti-hunger conversation is really different from the local conversation. So I'm a hunger fighter because I see firsthand as a college health nurse that food insecurity can forever change the course of a college student's life. Food insecure students are actually 43% less likely to graduate than their food secure peers. So it's my hope that food banks across our state can strive to create advocacy programs like the speaker series that will inspire everyday people like myself to advocate to end hunger in their communities. Advocacy has been so empowering for me and our elected officials really want to hear our hunger stories and this is what inspires change. So thank you so much Chuck and all of you here. I'm, it's an honor to work alongside you. So thank you for this honor. Thank you so much, Jenny, and thank, thank you for all the work that you're doing in your community and for your community. We all really appreciate it and are so excited that uh, we got to hear from you today and honor you with this award. Um, so with that, I want to pass it over to, uh, again, our, our wonderful uh, leader and hunger uh, fighter within shock, uh, Frank. Thank you so much, Eliana. And uh, so now has come the time when we are going to have an open mic for people who have actually experienced hunger and poverty to uh, just talk a little bit about their experience and about what uh, this year's Hunger Action Week is going to mean to them. 
there's no more effective advocate than someone who's actually suffered the indignities of, of hunger and of uh, you know public policy that falls short of what we need for a decent society. And we have a lot of great advocates who participate with us every year from the community. And uh, just to kick things off and get it warmed up for other people who may want to join, I'd love to invite uh, my good friend, Brittany Clark from Inglewood to join the line. She'll be the 310 number uh, up at the top. And she may have to unmute. Yeah, I think it's star six, right? Okay, I think I finally succeeded. Yeah. <laughs> hi, everyone. Um, hi, um, my name is Brittany Clark, and um, I am with Hunger Action LA. I, I am from Inglewood in Southern California, and um, my only income is SSI, and um, my partner's only income is SSI, and I'm trying to get straight to the point here, I'm sorry. And so we, we both have multiple health issues that require certain diets, but not the same diet. And so when you try to um, feed a household with different medical needs dependent on different diets, that can get expensive on its own. And then, um, Enter CalFresh. It's helpful. It was extremely helpful when they were giving us the extra funds during the COVID relief. Um, when the assistance was, sorry. <laughs> when we had more money coming in because of the COVID relief assistance um, added to the program, and then they cut the program. And now I, uh, there's only, Fifty to sixty dollars um, added to our household every month to help with groceries. And considering the prices, considering the the fact that the grocery bills um, have just gotten higher over the years, especially after the pandemic, and we spend four hundred dollars approximately on food alone, and it's not because we're trying to buy things like chips and soda and candy. We're trying to buy real food. And I, I believe in, you know, the idea that food is medicine too, because the, the healthier you can eat, the longer I think you live. It's a, it's a factor. It's because you are what you eat. And so, but because we don't drive, you have to factor in, when I say the grocery budget, I don't just mean the $400 that gets spent on food. There's us trying to travel to the regular supermarket to buy some things, and then you, you might travel to a, a more a healthier, like a whole foods market or something, trying to get things that don't exist in the regular market that you might need um, for either one of our specific diets. And then you have to try and get to a farmer's market. And a lot of times you have perishable food items, so you can't just hop on access paratransit or something and they, they can take you take out or two hours to get home. You might need to take a cab or Uber or pay someone to pick you up. So then now we're talking about the grocery bill going from 400 to approximately $600 a month. And it sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. And we need help. And so I get it. Our country has a lot of priorities, a lot of other things going on, but no matter what type of socioeconomic class you're in or what gender you are or what race you are or, or whether you were born in this country or where, whether you're an immigrant to this country, everyone needs to eat. And that's, I guess, my bottom line in all of this. Everyone needs to eat. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Is that you I hear, Stephen, as well? Just chipping in with some support? <laughs> Thank it, you. it is me, but, but I, I agreed with every word that the young lady just spoke, so. 
more power to her. Definitely. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, that's exactly what we're fighting for. Um, all the all the things that were just mentioned, um, the fact that everyone deserves to eat, everyone needs to eat. And, um, you know, this ties into the Hunger Fighter Awards uh, that we were, um, you know, giving out to people and the things that those winners were speaking to. It ties into our policy agenda um, that Jared and Itzel were covering. Um, uh, so thank you, Brittany, for speaking to all of those through your own lived experience and um, really underscoring why this work is so important, why this advocacy is so needed, because it, um, I think, as so many of us know, in the work we do in our communities or from our own personal experience, that these bills and policy decisions affect people and they affect people's daily lived lives um, and their and their day to day experiences, as you were sharing. So. I really thank you for sharing um, your story with all of us. And I um, I think, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there will be further time on Wednesday at noon to share more, to hear from more people about their experiences with hunger and trying to get food for their families. So I would invite you all to join us on Wednesday at noon. There's, You should already have a calendar invite for that, but if you do not, you can reach out. And I'm actually going to get in to the, just the logistics for the week, um, including that um, that event, just so that everyone, feels um, on the same page as we close out and as we um, prep and get into the week. So uh, as I mentioned, um, we are going to have another event uh, Wednesday at noon. Um, and that's what I was talking about where people can come and share. Um, but in general, uh, we are going to have legislative visits scheduled Monday through Friday. And if you registered for Hunger Action Week, you should have already received an email from your team leader for your meetings with the links to join, the phone information to join, and all the relative relevant materials. And if you haven't, um, you can feel free to uh, write me about that. Um, my email will be um, on the next slide in a moment. Um, and then... Uh, on Friday, we have a closing social hour from four to five. So again, that's another opportunity to share more about your experiences, to get to know your fellow Hunger Action Week participants better, to talk about the week and how your meetings went. Um, and you can also uh, mobilize online throughout the week with our social media toolkit, which I'm going to put in the chat right now. Um, that's another way to get involved if you weren't able to um, uh, participate in meetings or even if you were and you want to get involved online, um, uh, posting on social media is a great way for legislators to hear our voices and um, to lift up the priorities that we've been talking about today. So I'm also going to um, put uh, the participant folder in the chat again in a moment. And um, I really just wanna uh, thank you all for joining, uh, for participating in this event and for registering for Hunger Action Week. And if you have any questions, you can email uh, me and Frank uh, if you have any further questions or concerns that come up, but I really want to thank you all again and uh, send the congratulations again to our Hunger Fighter Award winners. Um, I'm so glad that we were able to honor them and hear from them today. And I also want to recognize that everyone who is here today and who is participating in this week is also Hunger Fighter. And we really appreciate the work that everyone is doing to fight hunger and fight for food justice and food sovereignty in their uh, communities. So I'm going to put the uh, participant materials folder in the chat. Um, so you can feel free to open that up before you leave if you haven't already. And again, just thank you all so much um, for joining us today and for participating in this week. And thank you, Matt, for being my uh, co-MC this morning. 
Thank you, Elena, and thank everyone else. Yes, thank you. Thank you for joining. Okay, everybody have a great day. Thank you, you too. Right on.